term high frequency ventilation means that it occurs at very very high rates okay so this is a radical uh, way of ventilating a patient often at greater than 150 breaths per minute in fact we can have much higher rates than that all right even up to uh, um, as high as 12 or 1400 breaths per minute all right depending on what we need for our patient all right so there's uh, some many different types, but the key ones we're going to talk about today are high frequency jet ventilation and high frequency oscillator ventilation. All right. These other ones have uh, have little application for us as clinicians. All right. So what kinds of patients should we use this on? All right. And the key term here is when conventional ventilation fails, when we've got no other options and we have a patient that has severe oxygenation problems, um, then we will resort to using high frequency ventilation. All right. There's not a lot of evidence to suggest it's even that advantageous, but we often will use it when we get very desperate um, for our patients and we're running out of options. A bronchopleural fistula is where we have an opening from the chest cavity and we're losing a lot of air through there. That's where high frequency jet ventilation can be uh, quite advantageous because even if there is a large um, gaping chest wound with air leaking out or we have multiple chest tubes in place with lots of air leaking out of the chest, we can still adequately ventilate our patients with high frequency jet ventilation. All right. Sometimes when uh, we've got very difficult airways, when we've got um, um, flaccid tracheas or cartilage problems or even large um, uh, cancers, sometimes we can ventilate around these problems with high frequency oscillation or jet ventilators. Sometimes it's advantageous during different types of surgery, such as cardiac surgery, because the lungs are just barely moving, allowing these physicians to get access to other areas of the chest cavity. Okay, well, in fact, that was the original goal of these modes was to minimize the cardiovascular effects of mechanical ventilation. We can argue about whether or not that occurs, all right? So one hertz is equal to 60 breaths per minute, all right? So just to give you an idea of what this means about the one hertz, right? Often for neonates, we use about 12 hertz, which is so that's going to be about... Um, about a 700 breaths per minute to 800 breaths per minute. All right. Key thing about this is that at these very, very high rates, all right, we have really small tidal volumes. All right. And the, even the mechanism of gas exchange is not even well understood with high frequency ventilation. We have some theories on that because we've looked at it with looking at um, like liquids um, and gases at these high rates, but it's really difficult to state what's happening right inside the airways. But it can be very effective both to ventilate and oxygenate patients with these really, really small tidal volumes. So we're going to put in these really, really small vital tidal volumes really quickly and a lot of them to get the ventilation that we require. All right. Key thing, um, both inspiration and exhalation are active processes. So we push the breath in and then we actually suck it back out again so we oscillate back and forth back and forth around a set pressure pushing and sucking air out in and out of the circuit all right some of them are just one way so that means just the inspiration is a positive thing but many of them are actually active exhalation so this is one of the few modes where we have active exhalation all right it uses a sinusoidal waveform, and that was my really poor attempt there to draw one up, but you'll see it again in a second. Why? Well, because with high frequency oscillation, we can have, again, we can, it's another way of manipulating, we can have these really, really high mean airway pressures. That's supposed to be a P, by the way. So we can have these really high mean airway pressures, and we can have those high mean airway pressures and oscillate around them allowing the patient to have this kind of continuous open lung strategy and then these very very small tidal volumes moving in and out that are just going to give us enough ventilation enough minute ventilation to remove the carbon dioxide buildup we're going to use this high mean airway pressure to help with oxygenation and that's that's really the association i want you to make high mean airway pressures is a way to help with oxygenation okay the frequency 
or the rate. So one cycle equals 60 breaths per minute. So one hertz, and we've seen that we can use as much as even 50 hertz, but that's very radical. Um, often we use in the range of neo with neonates uh, 12 to 15 hertz and uh, even less than that with adult patients often. But we can rank it, ramp, ramp it up much higher depending on the resonant frequency of the lungs. But the rate is one cycle or one hertz equals 60 breaths per minute. So just to give you an idea of how we work that out. All right, because it's so high, we work in hertz. All right, the amplitude is the amount of pressure and it's the size of the pressure waveform that's going to be oscillated around. Okay, so it's high frequency oscillation. We're going to oscillate this amplitude around the mean airway pressure that we want in our lungs. Okay, so this is the pressure swing around the mean airway pressure. So we establish a high level of, of pressure in the lungs and then we oscillate around that pressure. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. And of course, we're going to adjust the FiO2. Often with this mode, we're using very high FiO2s. And when we can start to wean it down, that's when we can start weaning down our settings. All right, so let's see what we have. We set here, um, and we're going to set our uh, PEEP level, and that's going to establish our baseline or our mean airway pressure. Okay. So we call it a PEEP, some manufacturers call it a CPAP level, a constant positive airway pressure, and then we oscillate the breaths around that level. Okay, so this of course is inspiration, and of course this is exhalation. So we oscillate around here at that very, very high rates. So this is our hertz, this is our rates. Okay, so one hertz equals 60 breaths per minute, and we often use around, you know, as much as 12 to 14 hertz, depending on our patient, all right? And then we oscillate, and this, of course, is the amplitude or the delta P that we're going to establish. And we're going to oscillate both equally inspiration and exhalation around that. And remember, exhalation is active in this case. So we're, we force the air in and we pull it back out. In fact, we use a type of stereo speaker um, membrane to oscillate back and forth to create this kind of waveform. All right. So we do keep a kind of a background flow of gas continuously around this. So the flow of gas towards the patient is going to be, of course, match our pressure waveform. Okay. So what are the beneficial effects? Because this is a this is one heck of a radical way to ventilate a patient. All right. And we don't do it unless we have to. But with certain patients, we found it to be advantageous. All right. The key things are we promote rather effective gas exchange at very low mean airway pressures and very low delta P's. So we can minimize the damaging effects both on the cardiovascular system and on the lungs themselves. We're hoping that this is a lung protective strategy. All right. So we're going to lower the incidence of barrow or pressure trauma to the lungs because we can actually do this at quite gentle pressures. Okay. So What's the key thing we're going to do here? We're going to have um, very high levels of PEEP, or quite a bit higher than normal. And then we're going to oscillate around this PEEP level. So we have high mean airway pressures, right? With very low tidal volumes, and actually quite low changes in pressure in the lungs, but at very, very high rates, OK? so. Wait, this is this is the mechanism here. We have very, very high rates, and that helps with CO2 removal. All right. And the mean airway pressure, this high, high mean airway pressure, or this was kind of open lung strategy here, helps us with oxygenation. So what do we use high frequency for? Patients where we have difficulty, we have very low oxygen um, capabilities with the patient. We have very low PaO2s. We're having a hard time oxygenating those patients. When we put them on the high frequency oscillators or jet ventilators, we can help with oxygenation so we can improve that. And we can also actually remove an awful lot of CO2 quite effectively with very low pressures. All right. So it seems like a kind of a nice win-win situation because these pressures with patients with IRDS or severe ARDS are the damaging effect. In fact, the little bit of healthy lung they have 
every little bit of pressure destroys that. So we're hoping we can get around destroying the healthy lung tissue by buying some time for our patient by using this high-frequency oscillation. Well